We're here with Liesl Pritzker Simmons, the co founder of the Blue Haven Initiative, and we're going to talk about philanthropy and inspiration and all that awesome stuff. First of all, is there someone in the philanthropic world, do you have kind of heroes in charity that you try to kind of emulate or at least give you um, motivation? Absolutely. Um, I think that what Pierre and Pam Omidyar have done with um, not only thinking about philanthropically what they give to, but also how they invest their assets, um, I think is a huge role model and thinking really creatively about different types of capital and how they can be deployed really strategically to solve certain problems. Um, I think they have really been team players philanthropically and they've built this field of impact investing in a way that I think has made a huge difference. So I've actually never met them, but they're huge heroes of mine. It's how to make that difference. Do you think one person or one kind of organization can really make a huge change in the world and in philanthropy, or is it just such a big thing that you know one person or group can't really make an impact? I don't think it's, it's one person's job to tackle. Um, I think you need a lot of different perspectives also and a lot of different discussion. And I'm not a very good discussant with myself, mm -hmm. so I like to draw upon other people's expertise. So I think philanthropy is best done as a team sport, mm -hmm. as Jeff School says. What do you define as impact investing? How is it different? And kind of what is your strategy and um, how do you get into it? Well, I think one of the big problems with impact investing is that it's sort of difficult to define. Mm -hmm. So what we started with was the simple premise that where you put your money is a moral decision. It actually has consequences wherever you put it, whether you choose to buy shoes or whether you choose to give it away mm -hmm. um, and everything in between. So if you start from that premise that actually where you put your money is a moral decision, I would then like to make it a morally good decision. And so for me, impact investing is simply looking at each of those decisions and what my dollar is doing and really thinking about it um, all the way down the value chain. And so that has a number of different ramifications in terms of portfolio allocation. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can get very close to the end of where your dollar is in things like, you know, uh, venture capital. It's a little bit harder to see the effect on that, you know, in your bond portfolio. Oh. Um, but I do think investing in municipalities is a good thing to do. I think it's good for local economies. So um, we've thought really broadly across our asset allocation um, and across various sectors as well as to how our money can be the most effective and, um, and do good in the world at the same time. So could you give me examples of certain investments you've made that have that kind of social responsibility or just make you feel good that you're just not just making money in return, but you're also getting a, a social return? Well, one investment um, that we made last year that I love is uh, a company in Ghana uh, called Waste Enterprisers. And what they do is they take fecal sludge. It's um, not very romantic, isn't it? I know, it's so <laughs> sexy, fecal sludge. Um, but um, they take fecal sludge and they dry it very, very quickly in a way that it retains um, as much caloric value as coal. Okay. And so you can burn this fuel exactly as you would coal. And so a number of industries that currently burn coal could burn this. Yeah. You just don't want to be a neighbor next to that plant, I imagine. No, it's, it doesn't smell bad. Oh, okay. It really okay. doesn't. <laughs> um, but um, what, what I particularly like about this is mm. not only are you creating a renewable fuel, as long as we keep yeah. producing fecal sludge, um, not only are you creating a, a, a renewable fuel, but in a lot of countries, uh, a, a lot of cities mm -hmm. in Africa, you have a serious sanitation issue. And also, currently, most citizens pay to use the toilet, really? okay. which is expensive. Yeah. It comes out, you know, if you don't have a lot of disposable income and it costs 10 cents a day to mm -hmm. use a public toilet, if you live in an urban area, that's kind of expensive. Yeah, it's a so what you what it's a very strange it's a very strange tax isn't it strange yeah. so uh, what I like about this company is it's actually turning that economic model on its head a little bit mm -hmm. and in fact people should be paid to use the toilet interesting because they're producing the input <laughs> 
So I, I know it's a, it's kind of it's a, a wacky. Yes, yeah, wacky. I know, but these are the kinds of companies that I mm -hmm. think are really innovating around um, issues like sanitation mm -hmm. and issues like access to clean toilets in a way that is actually making money for the mm -hmm. city and making money for the entrepreneurs. And are there examples of investments that are more mainstream? Well, I think this issue on the publicly traded companies um, gets quite personal mm -hmm. very quickly because you look at companies like GE, right, that, that um, hugely innovative in, the, in their management style and the way that they sort of engage employees mm -hmm. and they sort of innovate socially across different platforms. I think that's super cool. Yeah. I don't love that they have an arms practice. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, is as an investor, w does one outweigh the other? And the way that we've decided to look at our publicly traded portfolio is through, with a very, very sort of gray lens. Okay. And so you, you know, um, but I like companies that make real things and employ people fairly. So mm -hmm. I tend to favor companies that have good employee um, benefit packages. To me, that is a higher priority, mm -hmm. how you treat your employees than necessarily um, what the underlying product So is. would you invest in GE or no? Is the arms kind of side? I, I am do? invested because okay. so I, think, I think they do cooler things mm -hmm. than those bad things. I see. And as a, as a just somebody basically trading paper, I'm not mm -hmm. going to influence yeah. whether or not they decide to, to stop an arms practice or not. So it's not, uh, for me, it's more valuable um, the positive things mm -hmm. that they're doing. Cool. And what kind of one last question. In terms of what advice would you give to someone who wants to get involved, whether they have a family office or whether they just have a few little bit of savings? Like if they want to invest responsibly at impact investing, what's a good way to start? What's a good way to kind of find your targets, if you will? Um, I think that's a great question because what you definitely don't want to do is ask your financial advisors okay. <laughs> because they will dissuade you from this. Yes. Um, because they will tell you you'll lose money. And what I would say is that, again, back to my original premise, which is I think where you put your money is a moral decision. Mm -hmm. And so if you start with that, really you can use sort of the same lens through which you view your philanthropy with your investing um, and then build your portfolio from there. But luckily there's a number of sort of networks and resources mm -hmm. that are becoming more available for like, this what, type what, of what investing. Do you, what do you like? Well, there's the Global Impact Investing Network. Mm -hmm. um, they have a number of resources on their site. Um, going to SOCAP, which is a huge conference um, full of different impact investors. Um, a number of the larger banks also are starting to publish papers on the sector. Um, and a lot of the philanthropy conferences are focused on them mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I would probably the Global Impact Investing Network would cool. be the biggest array of resources.